five, one hundred one Dalmatians. Reading. This is an interesting instance about a group of dogs who were stolen by a dog napping gang and rescued by an army dog and his friend. Dog napping, fifteen puppies stolen, said the newspaper headlines. It was a sad day for Roger and Anita Redcliffe. Only yesterday, they, the proud owners of seventeen beautiful Dalmatians, now only two, Pongo and Peredita, remained. They were heartbroken and unhappy. I'm afraid we have done everything possible to find the puppies," said Roger sorrowfully. Peredi said Pongo to the puppies, weeping mother. Our humans are getting nowhere in the search. But I have a plan. The twilight bark. It's the fastest way to send news. If the London dogs have seen our puppies, they will let us know. We will send word tonight. When the Radcliffe's took Pongo and Perdita to the park that evening, Pongo barked the alert. He waited for an answer. Then he barked the news of the stolen puppies and asked for help. Far out in the country, the barking reached the shaggy ears of Colonel, a retired army dog, and his friend, a cat called Sergeant Tibbs. Fifteen puppies! exclaimed Sergeant Tibbs. That's odd. I heard puppies barking down at that old deserted mansion. Let's go and have a look. The two friends made their way through the snow. Sergeant Tips climbed in through a broken window. Inside, he saw one evil looking woman, two evil looking men, and Tips counted carefully 99 Dalmatians puppies, 15 wore collars. They were Pongo and Peridita's missing puppies. The woman, Cruella, screamed at the two men. The job must be done tonight. But the pups aren't big enough, answered one of the men. You couldn't get a dozen fur coats out of the whole lot of them. Oh my, thought Sergeant Tips. Those puppies are going to be made into coats? I have got to tell the colonel. He crept silently out to where his friend was waiting. The colonel immediately sent a message that the puppies had been found. When the message reached Pongo and Peridita, they ran to rescue the pups. They reached the mansion. The puppies were whimpering inside. Pongo and Peridita jumped into the room. While they kept the evil men busy, Tips helped all the puppies escape. They all hid in a warm barn. Are all fifteen of you here? asked Pongo. Then he noticed that the barn was filled with dozen of other puppies. Ninety-nine of you? gasped Pongo. Most of us were bought at pet shops said one puppy. That Cruella wants to make spotted coats out of us. Suddenly, they heard a distant message being barked to them. The message was from a big black Labrador who had a hiding place for the Dalmatians. He led them to a deserted blacksmith shop. Just then, Cruella and her helpers, who were following them, arrived. As Pongo tried to think of ways to escape, two puppies tumbled out of the fireplace. They were covered with coal black suit. Peridita, said Pongo, I have got an idea. We will all roll in the suit. We'll all be black Labradors. The puppies rolled in the suit. 
Pongu and Peridita joined them. Hurry! urged the Labrador. The van I ordered has come. The army of puppies marched into the van and went past Evil Cruella. She looked at them suspiciously. Then Cruella's eyes widened. As the last puppy got into the van, a lump of melting snow fell on its head. The suit was washed away, leaving the black coat and black markings of a Dalmatian. Cruella screamed to stop the van, but it was too late. The van was racing away. Back at the Radcliffe house, Roger and Anita were sad. They missed their Dalmatians. Suddenly, a host of happy, barking black dogs filled the room. Roger saw something familiar in the shape of a big dog's head. He dusted it off with his handkerchief. It's Pongo, he cried. With the pair of feather dusters, Roger and Anita uncovered the familiar spotted coats of their Dalmatians. Pongo, Peridita and their 15 puppies were all safe at home. But look Anita, said Roger. There are more puppies everywhere. There must be a hundred of them. Let's see. And he began to count. One hundred and one Dalmatians, said Roger. What will we do with all of them? gasped Anita. We will keep them, Roger answered.